Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News. And tonight, we are going to discuss the effects of the magnetic reversal on evolution. Now, we've covered this topic many times on the channel in either small snippets or larger exposés. But tonight, we're going to be covering the cutting-edge science that are being, bringing all of the pieces together. And we're going to be covering it together. Now, a paper that recently came out on the 29th of May, 2019, by Vigliotti and Chanel, The Role of Geomagnetic Field Intensity in Late Quaternary Evolution of Humans and Large Mammals, paints a broad picture, a picture that is completely opposite of a paper that came out shortly before this one, and we're going to be sharing both with you tonight. Now, the paper we'll be discussing, the most recent one, begins with this abstract. It has long been speculated that biological evolution was influenced by ultraviolet radiation, or UVR, reaching the Earth's surface. And despite imprecise knowledge of the timing of both UVR flux and evolutionary events, the past strengths of Earth's dipole field now provides a proxy for UVR flux because of its role in maintaining stratospheric ozone. This is a recent find which we can now use. Now, the timing of quaternary evolution events has become better constrained also by fossil finds, improved radiometric dating, use of dung fungi as proxies for herbivore populations, as well as improved ages for nodes in human phylogeny from human mitochondrial DNA and Y chromosomes. Not only that, the demise of the Neanderthals at 41 kiloyears can now be closely tied to the intensity minimum associated with the Landshamp magnetic excursion, which, by the way, at the same time, high UVR flux. Now, the conclusions of this paper are stunning. Now, what they start off with is what we often start off with. Correlation is not causation. But I digress. The timing of geomagnetic field strength minima, hence enhanced UVR flux as well as cosmic rays, appears to correspond to events in mammalian evolution. Now, improvements in knowledge of past geomagnetic field strength is coming like a fountain, like a waterfall. Information is coming quickly. And new mammalian fossil finds, advances in radi radiocarbon data, and DNA analysis of fossils, use of dung fungal proxies, herbivore populations, and advances in the mtDNA and Y chromosomes to map human phylogeny have all contributed to this possible linkage, which we're sharing tonight. There is a direct correlation to minima in chromosome, to map minima in geomagnetic dipole field strength at 13 and 41 kiloyears. Now that corresponds to many of the events we talk about on this channel. The Lechamp reversal at 41, and of course the Younger Dryas event at 12.5. And these, both of these events led to stratospheric ozone depletion and UVB levels at the Earth's surface. And do you know what we just started detecting in the last few years on the surface? UVB. Are you picking up what we're putting down? Almost everything that we've said has come true. So please open your ears and take notes. Cosmic rays neutrons, and the mutation rate in evolution is proven. We know that when the magnetosphere rains, uh, wanes, cosmic rays and neutrons and protons and electrical storms and proton storms and electrons and all kinds of particles, including radioactive particles, beryllium, carbon-14, and other things rain down on our heads. And if background levels of neutron radiation can explain errors in computer memory, 
then they should also explain errors in DNA replication, which, by the way, is called evolution. Now, this is a lot to digest. And according to this hypothesis, the geomagnetic field influenced evolution of long-lived mammals through exposure to UVR at times of low field strength, i.e., magnetic excursions or reversals. Yeah. Ozone holes are preferentially located at high latitudes because of the role of stratospheric temperatures and polar stratospheric clouds in ozone depletion. UVR arriving at the Earth's surface may have had an influence on evolution due to its strong mutagenic effects that we are now well aware of. And soon you're going to be fat and sucked into a computer. But I digress. Let's get, about, let's get on with the facts. Okay, I just erased some of them, so let's go there. Now, a paper coming out recently, which is going to have to download, unfortunately. It might take a minute. There it comes. Here she comes. Revisiting the biological ramifications of variations in Earth's magnetic field. Now, this paper concludes that there is no correlation between evolution and magnetic reversals. And it does so, just like the IPCC gets it wrong every day with global warming, by using computer models, which are models. Now, remember, computer models are only as good as the inputs you give them. And if you add all the wrong inputs for the situation, well, then your conclusions are dire. And this paper by Lingham is dire. In fact, I can't even believe this person is at Harvard. They should almost be embarrassed. Manas V. Lingham, please contact me. You're absolutely the most retarded scientist on the planet. Your brain capacity and your thought process is so polluted that it's almost insane. This is an absolute waste of funding, money, and time. Your entire life's work is a piece of shart. Now, if we take this as a grain of salt for mathematics, well, then you hit a home run in your abstract, your introduction, and your conclusion. Because your abstract introduction, your analysis, and your conclusion are all based on some mathematical model, which doesn't mean shit. It is based in zero fact. And we're talking about facts here, Lingham. And if you can't become multidisciplinary and you actually work at Harvard, you can, can suck it. I hope you watch this, Lingham. I hope someone sends you this so that we can wake your ass up on how pathetic your work is. Now, let's talk about J-E-T, Jet Channel, or Jet Chanel, or however you say that, and Vigliotti. These are multidisciplinary scientists that actually use facts, no computer models in science, to make their hypothesis and come up with their conclusions. So we're going to roll with this. And not only that, this paper is published in AGU 100. One of the top, yes, scientific journals in the field. So, thank goodness that some facts are getting through. And just like I bloviated at the beginning, it has been long speculated that biological evolution was influenced by ultraviolet radiation. And we now know that's true. And, and this paper will be shared in its entirety with you tonight. If it, if it, I have a new computer and new audio and even, uh, let's check out the new webcam because our, our laptop shut down last night. So I've been working all day to get this up and running for you guys. I hope you appreciate it. Now here's the paper, but it, it might not be the full paper. Yeah. Thankfully it is good times. So I'm going to be linking you to this full paper where you can see all of the data, the proxy data, the time frames we're talking about, and the magnetic reversals and excursions, the Blake, all the Blake actual uh, reversals here, the LeChamp, and this time series is not that good. But here we can see uh, the Younger Dryas event clearly and the perturbations with the second Dryas the recovery, and to take a look at what the magnetic field did here around six to 8,000 years ago. It was a cold period, by the way. 
but we see the Mono Lake here and the Lechamp and many other perturbations. So we're, there are many more that we're not even aware of. That's what you should glean from these graphs. Because if you read the words, you probably will get really confused. But you can come down here to the analysis and the conclusion, and you can clearly see the extinction of the Neanderthals occurring at a major flexure point. You can see the mammalian fossils and how they flourished in certain areas and how they changed while the cosmic ray flux increased. And this is basically... This graph you're looking at here is the most amazing science I've ever seen. It basically proves punctuated equilibria. That what we have is species that remain in stasis for thousands of years, and then they are eliminated and replaced by other species. There was no explanation for this. Darwin came up with gradualism and uh, survival of the fittest and all that BS supported by the church and every other ass tart that ever lived, but certainly not scientists because as early as the 1970s, we knew this was false. And this is like 50 years later and thankfully people are picking it up, which means not until 2038 or 39 are we ever going to accept this as reality. That evolution is episodic and periodic and caused by cosmic rays. It's controlled by the earth system. It's caused by... It's controlled by the solar system dynamics, the double dynamo in the sun, the dynamo in our solar system, and our connection externally through the Birkeland current to our Milky Way galaxy at the center where there is not a black hole, but there are seven plasmoids. Now, if you want to know some facts, the facts are that the poles started shifting early uh, in the 1900s. About 1907, they started moving. And here you can see the shift from 1600 to 2015. So from 1600 to about 1907, they remained in a standard area, which is normal for a pole to jiggle around in a standard region. But sometime during 1907, it started rapidly moving. And this is now the pole position over here. Yeah, it's past the North Pole, the magnetic, the rotational pole, <clears throat> and is now rapidly moving towards Siberia in the, in the, region of the Ukraine. Now, the South Pole has been doing the same thing and has rapidly run itself off of the coast of Antarctica and is headed towards Australia and Indonesia, where we expect sometime around 2034 for the poles to meet at the equator west of Indonesia based on the current trajectories. If you want to see this video and many more informative videos, please Take yourself over to magneticreversal.org, Ben Davidson's site. Give them a thumbs up. Tell them Diamond sent you. And tell them they're doing good work over there. Also tell them that the Grand Solar Minimum also began already. So, get over it. Now let's talk about Joe Nova. Cosmic ray seeded clouds during the last geomagnetic reversal. She's referring to a paper that we recently shared. Winter monsoons became stronger during geomagnetic reversals. And Robert Felix picked up on this uh, release in Science News and as corroborating evidence for his theory that geomagnetic reversals cause ice ages. And I can't agree more. This reveals the impact of cosmic rays on climate, which has been unraveled by Svensmark over the last 30 years. Thank you, Heinrich. Cosmic rays seeded clouds during the last geomagnetic reversal. And what the paper shows is that, yeah, 780,000 years ago when the poles of Earth flipped for 5,000 years, wild years, our magnetic shield was down and evolution occurred. Yes, <laughs> it did. About a quarter of its normal strength, which allowed more cosmic rays to come streaking through the atmosphere down to the lower part, nucleate clouds in the middle atmosphere. Yeah. And flux your ass. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. Times are changing. Even the mainstream science environment is picking up what we're saying. And that's because it's the truth. We're way ahead of the curve. If you're not ahead of the curve and you're not planting food, you should start learning how to grow food now. That's your biggest hedge. Because peace of mind is the key to the future. In the past, 
these events have occurred every 400 years. Geomagnetic reversals at the same time of grand solar minimums, not so much. So what you're looking at is decades of cosmic catastrophe, the likes of which no one has ever seen. Now, they want you to pay more taxes and to be incorporated in their globalist system of control, Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, and so on and so forth. They want you in a smart city. They want to know all of your emotions because they want to control you. Is that what your future looks like? Technology is fleeting. We've had this before, and it's all gone black. Last night, Manhattan went black, and over 100,000 people on the Gulf Coast because of a small storm. These types of events are going to continue to increase in your lifetime, and you're going to witness them. So there's no need to wait. You've already seen what's happening. There are no canned peas in Walmart. That's the big news. Everyone's emailing me. I went to the Walmart, and there were two shelves empty. But if you think you're going to live on canned food for the rest of your life, you have already are a sucker. Those of you people that are emailing me about canned food shortages and you're eating that right now, do you know how sick you are? How many pharmaceuticals do you have to take because your doctor demands it? Blood pressure medicine, all that garbage. I don't take anything. I haven't seen a doctor in 15 years and I never will after I saw what they did to my family. They killed my mother. And they're killing you. They're part of the cabal of the food system. If you don't know what we're talking about, my whole life's work began with the march against Monsanto. We told over a billion people what a genetically modified organism is, and about 10% were pissed. And you should be too. There is no more processed food that is, will be available in a short time. It is time you go back to basics. Learn how to wildcraft. Learn how to wild harvest. Learn where mushrooms grow from. Learn how to grow your own food. Prepare with the ranch.com. Prepare with the ranch.com. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when geomagnetic excursions and reversals cause evolution and you are being evolved now, which means you're becoming extinct. We know the insects are. Are you listening? Are you farming? We love you. Be safe.